The Jag Ministry will meet on Tuesday, October 7th, Tuesday, October 17th, and Tuesday, October 31st at 7 p.m. The Youth Choir will rehearse on Sunday, October 1st, and Sunday, October 8th, immediately following morning worship, and on Tuesday, October 10th at 7 p.m., and Thursday, October 19th at 7 p.m. We are calling all youth to join our youth choir. If you'd like to join our youth choir, please see Sister Regina Lee or Sister Sharita Pearson. All clergy will meet with Bishop and Lady Tanya every first and third Sunday at 9 a.m. for ministry classes. The deacons and deaconess will meet every second and fourth Sunday with Bishop and Lady Tanya at 9 a.m. for class. We'd like to wish a happy birthday to all the seasoned saints who celebrate a birthday in the month of October. First is Sister Rochelle Mosley, who will celebrate her birthday on October 3rd. Next is Brother Anthony King, who will celebrate his birthday on October 26th. And then we have Sister Bonetta Hicks, who will celebrate her birthday on October 30th. On behalf of Bishop Robinson and the entire Judah Tabernacle Church family, we would like to wish you a happy and blessed birthday. And we can't wait to see what God does in this next season of your lives. The month of October is known as Breast Cancer Awareness Month and to celebrate on second Sunday, October 7th, we are asking that all members participate by wearing pink. We will also be celebrating those who have defeated breast cancer on this Sunday. There will be a Sunday School's Teachers Meeting on Wednesday, October 18th at 7 p.m. All Sunday School teachers are asked to be present for this meeting. The Cedric A. Robinson Scholarship Committee will meet on Wednesday, October 18th at 8.30 p.m. A Zoom link will be sent to your email at a later date. If you are interested in joining this committee, please see Sister Beverly Stanbrook. The mentors will be meeting with the mentees for the Kings and Queens Makers Mentoring Program on Saturday, October 21st from 12 noon to 3 p.m. Lunch will be served beginning at 12 noon. All children and youth are asked to be present for an afternoon of fun, games, and discussions. The JAG Ministry will be having a walking taco fundraiser on Sunday, October 29th, immediately following service. Come out and get your walking tacos and let's support our youth. The JAG Ministry is presenting a family fun night on Tuesday, October 31st at 7 p.m. Your assistance is very much needed to provide treats and candies of all sorts. At your leisure, please fill the treat box provided in the fellowship hall. Jag Ministry would like to thank you so much for your assistance in this endeavor. If you love the people of God and aspire to cover them in prayer, join us for intercessory prayer every Tuesday in-house in the sanctuary at 6 p.m. and every Wednesday on the prayer line at 11 p.m. If you have any prayer requests, please send them to prayer at judertab.org. Lady Tanya will be the guest speaker for New St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church at 10 a.m. for their women's program on Sunday, October 8th. The church is located at 21050 Ascension Avenue in Warren, Michigan. Then on Sunday, October 21st, Bishop Robinson will be the guest speaker at Remnant Worshippers Ministry located at 20470 Hubble in Detroit, Michigan at 10 a.m. for their 19th pastoral anniversary. For this Sunday only, morning worship here at Judah Tabernacle will be delayed until 11 a.m. Then also on Sunday, October 22nd at 2 p.m., Lady Tanya will be the guest speaker for Abundantly Blessed Ministries on their 20th church anniversary. The entire church is invited to worship and the choir and ushers are asked to serve. The church is located at 13700 Stevens in Warren, Michigan. Lady Tanya will be the guest speaker for the XL Women's Conference on Saturday, November 4th from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. The conference is hosted by Shamika Boswell Ministries and will be held at First Missionary Baptist Church located at 24092 Bond Road in Belleville, Michigan. Conference tickets are now on sale. Please contact Shamika Boswell Ministries at 313-258-9003 for tickets. Judah Tabernacle, let's get ready to celebrate our man and woman of God's 18th pastoral anniversary. On Sunday, October 15th, we'll be celebrating 18 years of pastoral excellence from Bishop Cedric and Pastor Tanya Robinson. On that Sunday, our guest speaker will be none other than Reverend Dr. Herbert B. Robinson Jr. of True Love Missionary Baptist Church. We will also have a guest psalmist, the famous Lady Peggy James. Let's not forget our love offering assessment of $200 per member. 
We will also have a movie night on Friday, October 13th at 6 p.m. right here at Judah Tabernacle Church. So let's celebrate our pastors in grand fashion as we celebrate their 18th pastoral anniversary. Well, bless the Lord, everybody. It's good to be in the house of the Lord again. Amen. If you thought about it, come on and clap your hands. Praises. Amen. Amen. God is due all the praise. Amen. Hallelujah. If he's been good to you this week, come on and shout back at me. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sound like somebody really had a good time with the Lord last week. Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. I want to get into the lesson tonight, but I feel like a little praise has to go forth first. Amen. 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 Give me a praise song, somebody. Come on. Don't nobody know no songs? <laughs> every, <t> <laughs> every time I turn around, the Lord keeps blessing me. Every time I turn around, God keeps on blessing me. Every time I turn around, hallelujah, he keeps blessing me. So my soul says, hallelujah, he keeps on blessing me. Every time I wave my hand, <laughs> he keeps blessing me. Every time I wave my hand, God keeps blessing me. Every time I wave my hand, he keeps blessing me so my soul says hallelujah he keeps on blessing me every time i stomp my feet hallelujah <laughs> he keeps blessing me every time i stomp my feet my god keeps blessing me Every time I stomp my feet, hallelujah, he keeps blessing me. Hallelujah, the Lord keeps blessing, blessing me. And then it start feeling good to you. Every time I turn around, <laughs> somebody better get their spin in. He keeps blessing me. Every time I turn around, God keeps blessing me every time I turn around hallelujah he keeps blessing me so I say hallelujah he keeps on blessing me hallelujah you can put anything in there every time I praise his name <laughs> he keeps blessing me you think of and to give God some praise Hallelujah, hallelujah. He keeps on blessing me. So I say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Every time I think about it, every time I hear his name, every time I say Jesus, he just keeps on blessing me. Amen. Anybody else getting these kind of blessings? Amen, amen. Every time I turn around, he there he goes again. <laughs> he just blessed me again. Amen, amen. So I just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. I love him. I love him. I love him. Anybody else in here love the Lord? 
Amen, amen. I bet nobody in here loves them like I do. I don't think y'all even have a clue. Amen. Amen. God is too good to me. Amen. 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 If it had not been for the Lord on my side, I wouldn't be standing here today. So it's just because of him, glory to God, I do what I do. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Let your soul just shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Revelations, praise the Lord. Let me pray first. Father God in heaven, tonight we come together to give you honor, to sit in your presence, O oh God. We're not too busy like Martha, but we're ready like Mary to sit at your feet and hear what you have say, about to say unto us, your church. So, God, have your way on tonight. Bless these, your people. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. In the book of Revelations, chapter 1, verse 8, it says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Amen. He's my past, my present, and my future. He is our everything. We can't, uh, we can't make it without God. Amen. Amen. Psalms 1 even says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night, and he shall be like a what? Tree, Tree planted by the rivers of waters. Amen. Glory to God. His what? His leaf shall not wither. Amen. And his, I'm sorry. That and well, I better say it. I better read it. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. You can't fail when you are in the presence of God. Amen. Amen. You want to be steadfast. Amen. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Praise Him. Amen. All right. Now, on tonight, glory to God, we are um, finishing up chapter 8. I want to close that out to go into chapter 9. Uh, there are some things there that will frighten you. Uh, I want to arrest your fears, glory to God, because it has nothing to do with you. Which, let me say, let me clarify that it has everything to do with you if you're not on God's side. Amen. But if you are on the Lord's side, you will absolve from this destruction. Amen. Amen. In Revelation chapter 8, verse 7, it says, The first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth, and a third part of the trees was burnt up, and all the green grass was burnt up. I put here that some experts do not accept a literal fulfillment of this verse. However, the seventh plague on Egypt in the days of Moses was a rain previous hail mixed with fire that killed cattle, herbs, and trees. Amen. Not everybody that studies scriptures has an understanding of what God is able to do. But if the scriptures said that the earth the third part of the trees will be burnt up and the green grass would be burnt up i think i'd rather listen to the scriptures than some expert who wants to tell me that oh, that's not literally what that meant are you following what i'm saying amen now uh if you do remember your bible that plague that moses uh you that in egypt when they threw that seventh plague it was a plague directed against Egypt's false god that they named Isis. Okay. So God has also rained hell, fire, and brimstone on what we know as Sodom and Gomorrah. Are you following me? So I'm really one to say that God is more than able to do what he wants to do when he gets ready to do it. If he did it once and did it twice, he can do it again. Amen. 
So don't let some uh, uh, theologians or scholars who've delved into the scriptures to try to dissuade you from what the scripture is actually saying. Amen. Amen. Now, these are the, this is the chart that we were going through last time of the seven trumpets. The first seal had to do with hell, fire, and blood. The second one had to do with uh, burning of mountains. The third seal is the burning star called Wormwood. The fourth seal is going to cause heavenly bodies to be struck. The fifth seal is the first one. That'll be when Satan, uh, his pit becomes open. Okay. On the sixth seal, when that, when that trumpet, when it's blown, I'm sorry, that second woe will be the four fallen angels that we're going to hear about. Okay. And then you have the seventh trumpet, which is going to be the third woe that has to do with the seven bowls. But we probably won't get to that until we get into chapter 11. So I want to finish up eight here where we are on the fourth trumpet, because that has to do with the third sun, a third of the moon and stars being darkened. We're here in Revelation chapter eight, which will move quickly over into these last two the fifth and sixth trumpets we'll pick up on Revelation chapter 9 are you with me amen so it says here that the second trumpet the sea will be struck all right the waters the seas are they talking about a specific sea or are they talking about all the seas and oceans that are here on the earth well, it, it just tells us that there's going to be something like a burning mountain that'll be thrown in the sea. Okay. And then a third of the sea will become blood. A third of the creatures in the sea will die. And a third of the ships that are in the sea will be destroyed. It might seem like it'll be a catastrophe. Could it be perhaps a uh, mortar of some sort coming out of the s out of space and landing into our atmosphere. How is God going to do it? I have no idea. But the first trumpet will signal, and when this trumpet gives its signal, judgment upon the earth and the sea will occur okay now i put in here again in the days of moses it was a plague that turned the waters into blood that was his first plague he took his staff and the nile river and all the uh, waters in that area of egypt turned to blood amen and if that be the case uh, it, it was a direct attack against what the god, the god that they, the god that they called Haka, H A K A. Now that killed the fish, killed the frogs, and destroyed the waters from being consumed. Amen. So I'll just put that in there to show you that God did it once; He can also do it again. Are you following me? Okay, let's get into it even a little deeper. Now, Revelation chapter 8, 10 through 11, it says, And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning, as it were, a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of water. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. Do you remember the days of Elijah, Elisha, when the men were drinking the water and they cried out that it is bitter? And then he uh, took some sticks and threw it in where the waters were bitter. Then he said, drink now. And they were able to drink and the water was made healthy. The bitterness was taken out of it. Okay. In that scripture, he takes two sticks, throws them into the water. All right, so if you take two sticks and cross them, it makes that uh, cross symbol, which would then indicate to us in our day 
that it is only going to be through salvation, the salvific grace of God, that you'll be able to even survive if you were to drink of these bitter waters. Amen. So it tells us that a great blazing object containing some type of pollutant or poisonous substance will fall out of the sky. It will be named after a bitter herb called wormwood that we find in the Bible. Okay. So it will contaminate one third of the earth. It will contaminate the fresh water supply, causing the people to die from drinking that tainted water. And I need to express to you that if you are on the Lord's side, God can still uh, save you in the midst of the trouble that's destroying others. I know that's the truth because sometimes some of you are survivors of things that perhaps made others in your family pass away. You with me? Uh, you may have survived uh, uh, cancers that perhaps took out your grandmother and her mother or so forth and so on down the line. But God has saved you, spared you in what you might be going through that looks similar. Amen? Amen. So somebody ought to just say, thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. Now, Revelation chapter 12. I'm sorry. Revelation 8 verse 12 says, and the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars. So as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. likewise. I want you to hear the language that is taking place. Everything that happens so far that I brought to your attention, a third part of it had been destroyed. Okay. Uh, so if we look at the whole world in three parts, uh, four parts, a third would be destroyed. Are you with me? Okay, three out of the four would be destroyed, meaning that uh, there is this one part that is uh, saved. I'm going somewhere, and I got to set it up real good if that's all right. All right. So pagan religions worship these objects, astrology, witchcraft, fortune telling. Destroying these objects of worship will cause the earth to become extremely cold and many will freeze to death. Okay. Okay. This is going to get real good in just a second. All right. In Revelation chapter 18, it says, And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Whoa, 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 to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels, which are yet to sound. We did four, but we got three more to go. So who or what is this angel? Some say it will be the raptured church. Others say it will be an eagle. One thing is for sure, if God made Balaam's donkey talk, he can also make an eagle speak. But it's going to be a flapping winged uh, creature flying through the earth saying, woe unto the inhabitants of the earth. Okay. The angel will fly through the air pronouncing these three woes. It will be hard to imagine, but these three woes will be worse than any previous judgment that we had already mentioned. Everything we mentioned so far is chaotic and it can be bad. But when this angel starts to cry out, that's an indicator that it's going to get even worse. Okay. All right. Now we go to chapter 9. I wanted to finish that up. So these highlights in chapter 9 are going to be the opening of the abyss, the demon-possessed locusts, four bound angels, 200 million troops and the unrepentant heart. Let's get into it. Revelation chapter 9 verses 1 through 21. What I want to point out is this verse and it says, And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven into the earth. 
and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. Okay. It appears as if a star fell from the heavens, flashing down into the earth, going past the earth into the inner depths, and then he's going to release those that are locked in what is called the, the bottomless pit or the abyss. Okay. So this is not a literal star or even a star that will fall, but it is one that has already fallen, and that star would be Satan. Okay. Now, if you are a Bible reader, Jesus says, I saw Satan fall like lightning. That's in Luke chapter uh, 10, I think it is. Let me get over there just to show you. Anybody faster than me? Let's get there. Okay. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, chapter 10, verse 17, I think is where it's going to start, where it says over here, 10, 10. Okay. Okay, and it says over in Luke 10, 17, it says, And the 70 returned again with joy saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. All right, now, let me just give you some background right quick. If you go to Luke chapter 8, it starts out where Jesus, Luke chapter 8, Jesus comes into the city and he starts casting out devils and healing others that are filled with different uh, sins or uh, uh, diseases that are up on them. That's Luke chapter 8. If you go into Luke chapter 9, Jesus appointed his 12 disciples. There in chapter 9, it says, Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and cured and, and to cure diseases. That's 12 disciples. First, it was Jesus in chapter 8 demonstrating. Luke chapter 9, Jesus appoints 12 disciples to cast out devils to walk in his name and have power over all the enemy, amen? When you get into Luke chapter 10, the very next chapter, it says, and then he appointed 72 others, amen? Uh, let's see, after these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also, 70, and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place where he himself would come, and he has given them power and authority over all devils. They come back in verse 17, and it says, And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Okay. I want to point out to you that word, that number 70. When we were studying last week and the previous weeks, over in Daniel, it talks about the 70 weeks. And Daniel is talking about the tribulation, which we're studying, the, the, the end time rapture and things like that. So now God uh, demonstrates for us. He has Jesus to demonstrate it. Then he appoints 12 to do what he just did. Okay. 12 is a number of governmental perfection or divine governance where the, the heavens are lined up for perfection. Now, then let's say comes the 70 weeks that Daniel was in reference to talking about the tribulation. And now here Jesus is using 70 who have been appointed to be as disciples, doing just like the 12, doing just like he himself. They have power and authority over all devils. Amen. So now then when we even get over here into Revelation, for all these angels, these powers and uh, uh, stars far fallen from the heavens, the Lord has empowered you, those who are also followers of him, to have power and authority over all devils. Why is he doing that? Because God loves us so much that he wants to do everything he can for others to receive salvation. 
He does not want anyone that is created, that is human, to go through these last final sufferings. But if you're just going to continue to reject God, continue to deny him, not even accept Jesus, won't have anything to do with God, then woe unto you because you'll be the one falling into all these disparities. disparities. Amen. So now then, I'm trying to tell you that you now are empowered by God to act as a representative of his to help someone else get saved. The, he's anointed you. He's equipped you. How do I know? John chapter 8, verse uh, 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 31. Let's go over there. John 8, 31. Let's see, I'm in John. Here's verse 8, 31. And he says, uh, then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Anybody want to be free of what I'm talking about up here? Then if Jesus demonstrated a sign, Twelve of his disciples to do what he has done and then assign 70 others to do it also. He's saying now, if you continue in my word, then you are a disciple of his indeed. And you shall know the truth. And then that truth shall what? Did it say it make you free? Did it say set you free? Did it say it might work? Did it say it's a possibility or a chance it could work? I, think I better go back and read it. I think it said, uh, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciple indeed. Point blank. No doubt about it. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall, didn't say set you free. It didn't say a possibility that you could be free. It said a de de definitive statement that you shall, it shall make you free. Amen. Do you know how to make somebody do something? I mean, some of you all got kids. Do you know how to make your kids wash them dishes? Do you know how to make your kids come in before the street lights? Anybody know how to make somebody do something or you just always uh, uh, let it slide, don't say nothing, don't even, don't even put them on punishment. When you want to make somebody do something, you gonna, you, they either going to do it or they're going to have some repercussions and consequences. Are you following me? Amen. So if you make them do it, then God is saying, if you do this, then this you'll know. And that which you know will make you free. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm about to get somebody free up in here. Amen. Hallelujah. You just need to do what thus saith the Lord, and it shall be given unto you. Amen. All right. Now, watch where I'm taking you. Revelation 9 verse 2 refers to this star as a he, talking about Satan. Satan will be cast down and will be given the key to the bottomless pit. That's the abyss, a place of torment where the worst of his demonic spirits are being held. Amen. What I'm telling you, the spirit, the demonic spirits that you've been putting up with, they have nothing on these that's been locked away. You think the ones that's been running around and uh, causing the havoc that we've been enduring. These right here, God had to lock them up and wouldn't let them re be released until he releases Satan, gives him the key, and then allows Satan to let them out so that they can cause havoc up on the earth. Sometimes you just got to take him in and thank God that he has protected you as well as far as as much as he has protected you. Hallelujah. So what am I telling you? God is saying the demonics that's on the earth right now, you have power and authority over all devils. I better say that louder. 
You have power and authority over all the devils that have been up and down through this earth causing the havoc that they have been causing. Because God is saying, I lock these up because I don't want you to deal with these yet. But the ones that's running around loose in here, I'm giving you power and authority over all, de all devils. Fat devils, skinny devils, cancer devils, diabetic devils, blind devils, lame devils, uh, whatever the problem is. He says you got power and authority over all devils. You know what all means in the Greek? All. all everything included. Are you with me? You got power and authority over all devils. Where did I get that from? I'm still coming out of Luke chapter 10. Because Jesus says, I saw Satan fall like lightning. I'm in Luke chapter 10, verse 7, 18 now. And he said, I beheld, that means saw. I saw Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And then he says, notwithstanding in this rejoice not. Don't get excited about this, that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. See, you might get excited because you were able to cast out a headache or get a bill paid, but he said don't get excited about that. You need to get excited because your name is written in heaven. Don't get excited because you laid hands on somebody and they got killed. He said it's supposed to happen. You're supposed to have power over, did it say all? Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, don't get excited about that. Don't rejoice in that, that the spirits are subject unto you. They supposed to be. But rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. This is what God is looking for you to do. Have power and authority over all devils to make Satan mad enough where he can just say, he'll just say, well, let's just end it all. Give me the key. I'm, I'm about to let some, some loose on you all. Are you with me? So we're really moving up into this as abyss, this, this bottomless pit being open. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, when the let's go to Revelation 9 2. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. That's on the earth. Okay, Satan will descend, open up the bottom of his pit, and when he does, the thick black smoke will rush out, covering the earth in darkness. The sky will be blackened, and it will block out the sun. The abyss will spew out pollutants like a gigantic furnace or a volcano and make breathing extremely difficult. Revelation 9.3, and there came out, of the smoke, locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. These locusts will come out of the smoke, but not locusts as we know them. They will not be grasshoppers that have plagued people around the world. Instead, they will be demon-possessed and have horrible features, part animal, and part human. Okay. Remember, they, 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 these have been locked away. When Satan releases them, the smoke will come out. Then out of the smoke will come these uh, part animal, part human locusts to terrorize the earth. 
These locusts will be like scorpions. They will have stingers to stab and poison their victims. Jesus once visited to get the, the, the watch this. Jesus, you remember, visited the man at the Gazarenes, the man who was uh, running back and forth through the tombs naked and then popping chains and fetters, that kind of thing. Remember him? Okay. Do you remember when Jesus said, uh, uh, what is your name? And the demon spoke back and said, we are legion, which means a legion is a, at least a thousand or more. Jesus said, what is your name? One person. The, the voice spoke back and said, we are legion. We, plural. Okay. Then they asked him not to cast us to the abyss. But they said, can we go cast us? Okay, let's see. Jesus once visited the Gezerines where the, he or the demon possessed man living among the tombs. The demons begged Jesus not to cast them into the abyss. So he cast them into a herd of pigs instead. Okay. Demons would rather be in a herd of pigs than to be cast into the abyss. Let me ask you another way. If you're already a, a terror, you're already a demon, and you scared to go to the abyss? <laughs> <laughs> oh, please don't send us to the abyss. Cast us into the pigs instead. You already a demon. You already on, on that side. And you scared to go into the abyss? There's got to be something awful coming out of the abyss. Chapter 9, let's continue. When the fifth trumpet is sounded, Satan will be given the key to the bottomless pit. The sun and sky will be darkened from the smoke coming from the abyss. That's Revelation 1 and 2. That's saying demon-possessed locusts will come from the bottomless pit to torment mankind for five months. The Bible is specific. The pain from the locusts will be so severe that men will seek death, but God will not let them find it. The demon can attack you and sting you, hurt you so badly. The pain will be so excruciating, you'd, you'd want to die. Well, uh, -uh God said, you deserve this. Mm -mm, you shouldn't have had me release these demonic spirits on you. You deserve this. Amen? Now, these demon-possessed locusts in Revelation chapter 4, and it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. I told you, you want to make the first rapture. When he comes back, you want to make certain that you're going back with the Lord. But for those who have not made it, this is what you're going to encounter. So I'm, I'm trying to tell you this is not anything to have anything to do with you. I hope I'm talking to you. But in, just in case you missed that flight. <laughs> you have to deal with what's in the abyss. That's why I say I'm glad to be on the Lord's side. I want to make sure I want the world to hear me. I am on the Lord's side. Don't make no mistake about it. Hallelujah. So these locusts will be under God's control. They will only harm those who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. We talked about that a couple weeks ago. You want to make sure you got the Lord's stamp of approval. Normally, locusts eat plants, but they will be commanded by God not to touch the grass, the plants, or the trees. Because oxygen is produced by these plants, and if they destroyed all the plants, then oxygen wouldn't produce, and people will die for the lack of oxygen. So God is specific. Don't eat the green stuff. Don't eat the trees. Don't eat the plants. I want you eating these flesh uh, human beings. Therefore, people will suffer from the demonic locusts that are commanded to eat the flesh of mankind. Moving on. 
Revelation 9, 5, and them, I'm in verse 5, and to them it was given that they should not kill them, but they should be tormented five months, and their torment was of the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. Okay, so the locusts will torture mankind for the period not to exceed five months. Five, if you remember me, is the number of grace. So God is using the suffering to bring people to salvation through Jesus to Christ. So could be longer, but God said, I'm not going to make it longer because my grace is enough. My grace is sufficient. If they haven't received me in these five months, hallelujah. I'm going to let them continue. Now, Revelation 6, verse 9, 6. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. You want to talk about overcoming suicide? Get on top of the building and jump down these 20 stories. And then you get down to the bottom and found out it didn't work. <laughs> you, you tried to cut your own wrist and slit your own throat. You leaking blood and still living. <laughs> you decided to whatever you tried to do to seek death. Death said, mm -mm, oh, no, uh -uh. death even escaping you. That's got to be crazy. So during these five months, during this five month period, people will hurt so much that they will want to die. Their nervous systems will become infected. Parts of their bodies will begin to swell and hurt, and other parts will fail and uh, not function as they should. Many will take medicines that will even be, uh, uh, they will even fail to provide relief. So God will not let them find death to end their suffering. They will be wise to accept Jesus. You see the extent that God will even go to, to even give you an opportunity to still say, I receive you, Lord. Amen. Grasshopper or locust? Okay. Revelation 9, 7. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses. This is the shape of the locust. Like unto horses unto battle. And on their heads were as it were crowns like gold. Their faces were as faces of men. And they had hair as the hair of women. And their teeth were like the teeth of lions. And they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was the sound of chariots of many horses running the battle. They had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men for five months. They came dressed for battle. They came out of the abyss with crowns on their head, breastplates on their chest, teeth like lions, looking like men in the face, flapping and flying, and then got stings in their, a stinger in their tail to punish you. So the word likes appears eight times in these verses. And John is using comparisons and symbolic language to describe what these demon-possessed locusts will look like. Bodies like horses, a crown like gold, hair like men, teeth like lions, and breasts of iron, and tails like scorpions. Because you're thinking of a scorpion that no longer than three is long but could it be that this thing is huge for them to indicate that looking like horses hmm, okay all right revelation 9 11 and they had a king over them which is the angel of the bottomless pit whose name in the hebrew tongue is abaddon but in the Greek tongue, his name is Apollyon. Apollyon. Okay. We, this is not Satan. 
This is the king in the bottomless pit. Satan was the angel that unlocked the bottomless pit. Okay. All right. Abaddon means destruction. Apollyon means destroyer. This unnatural army of locusts will be under the direction of an angelic king. Some say this angelic king will be Satan, but it seems more likely it will be one of Satan's assistants. Satan will not be the one of the demons confined to the bottomless pit, that abyss. He is the fallen star who opens the pit to let the others out. So now then, look at this army of, you know, this demon army. So the passage gives us the actual physical description of the creatures. They are not like anything we know. They are not helicopters or jets shooting missiles filled with chemical or biological weapons or uh, as some might speculate. These creatures come out of the smoke of the pit and the angel of the bottomless pit is ruling over them. Again, this is not Satan because the king over these beings is named Abaddon. The name Abaddon means destroyer. And these locusts are led by the destroying angel who is probably one of Satan's commanders of the dimension called the underworld. So these locusts are actual physical beings that are seen out of the same pit, the angel in the verse, in verse two, who opened it with his key. And the five months of this torment will be a literal hell on earth. Okay. Why is he doing that? Because if eternal damnation is worse than this, God wants you to experience what it's going to be like where you won't have an opportunity to die. You'll be looking to die, but that won't help you. And then you still reject Christ and you go through this. God is setting you up for eternal hell, which he's trying to help you avoid. Are you with me? Okay. Now, Revelation 9, 12 says, one woe is past and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. Verse 13, and the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden art altar, which is before God. Okay. The horns on this golden altar refer to the horns like animal horns. They were extensions that were placed at the four corners of the altar of burnt offerings. Okay. Sacrificial animals are even men. I'm um, sacrificing. Sacrificial animals or men were tied to these horns when they were going to die. Sometimes you read in the scriptures where somebody ran to the temple and they wouldn't come out. So they went in to destroy them and to kill them. Actually, they would have been at the altar praying that their life would be spared. And if they're there in the altar and they still come to get them, like Jehu is going after, I can't remember who it was, they go into the temple and them out anyway well kill them anyway all right so what is God showing us Revelation 9 14 saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates who are these four angels the fact that they are bound indicates that they are four more foul fallen angels also, they may be responsible for the many sins that occurred along the Euphrates. When you hear about the Euphrates, you're in Genesis. That's where it first comes from, where the water in the Euphrates comes from, the Garden of Eden. Amen. That is where Adam sinned. The Euphrates is also where Cain killed Abel. It is where the flood began in the days of Noah. In the days of Nimrod, who was trying to build a tower to heavens, and God uh, knocked it down and, 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 and dispersed all their language, different languages where they couldn't communicate, it, that is where the tower of, ba ba tower of Babel was built. It is also where world government and world religion began. It is also associated with astrology, idolatry, demon worship, witchcraft, and the other sordid sins. Euphrates has a, a track record of, of, of the Satan them using that to 
uh, bring destruction up on the earth. Because everything is supposed to flow from the Euph Euphrates River into all the rest of the world. So if Satan them can start at the head and then filter down their sin through this Euphrates River, it'll then contaminate the whole world. Are you following me? Okay, important. So I'm going to give you this. It was near the Euphrates that sin began. The first lie was told, the first murder was committed, the Tower of Babel began the false things to spread upon the earth. The Euphrates was the eastern boundary of the Promised Land, and Israel's influence extended to the Euphrates during the reigns of David and King Solomon. So the region near the Euphrates was the central location of three world powers that oppressed Israel. We're talking about Assyria, Babylon, and Medo-Persia. It was on the banks of the Euphrates that Israel endured 70 long, bitter years of captivity. It is the river on which the enemies of God will cross to engage in the battle of Armageddon. Just history facts. I wanted to throw those in. That all right? Okay. What about these fallen angels? Well, the four angels were loose, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for, for to slay the third part of men. Verse 16. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000. And I heard the number of them, he says. And thus I saw horses in the vision. And them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire and jacinth and brimstone and heads of the horses were as the heads of lions and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. Okay. We talked about the four horsemen. We talked about uh, the releasing of these angels out of the abyss. Now God gives four more angels that have been bound who are just as demonic and terror and and terrorizing okay so they're going to be released at a precise month on a specific day in the year of the 70 year tribulation all right now i just found this in here where it says china and india are the only two nations capable of fielding 200 million soldiers that's in the natural Okay, and then China's oil reserve is depleting and they need gasoline because it's rapidly increasing, maybe even seven times faster than it is here over in the United States. So now then, what are we discussing here? Uh, these 200 million troops will have horses. It could possibly be on machines. Breastplates that are fiery red, uh, hyacinth blue and sulfur yellow they will have heads resembling lions and out of their mouths will come fire smoke and brimstone so the the scholars like to think that they might be projectiles like missiles or something like that indicating that they might be man-made machines okay um i disagree the bible says what it says Okay, and these are the attacks that are coming up on those who reject Christ. But let me help you so I won't scare you to death. Okay, Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 2, Revelation 21, Revelation 22. Okay, you got the first two chapters in Genesis. Then you have the last two chapters in Revelation. If you just read those. And receive what is being said, you'll be all right. Okay. Genesis 1 and 2, that's the first two. The last two books of the Bible, Revelation 21 and 22. If you close everything out and just focus on those four verses, that's the blessing that God wants for your life. Are you hearing me? Okay, now, everything else, okay, Genesis 1 and 2, then Revelations 21 and 22. Everything in between those, that's where Satan comes in. 
comes in at Eve at the garden, Genesis chapter 3. But then everything about him is destroyed in Revelation chapter 20. In between that, God had to give us laws. He had to give us prophets. He had to give, bring us Jesus so that we could even fight this devil that we have to deal with in the earth. Amen. And he's given us power and authority over all devils, all demons. He gave us power over all the enemy. Amen. Now, if we come to know Jesus and know him rightly, we got power over all the demoniacs. So if you really want to know what God wants for you, it's in Genesis chapter 1 and 2. And then it closes out with Revelation 21 and 22. Read those, skip everything else, and you'll know the blessings that God has for your life. But because you had to go and investigate that tree, Adam, now Satan has been released with all his demoniacs in the earth. But God knew that, and he said, mm -mm, I'm not going to release all of them because there's some of them that these people are not ready for. If they can handle these, then they are already absolved from uh, uh, eternal damnation. But if they re don't receive me, then I'm going to release these that are in the abyss upon the earth. And if they can't handle the ones that are on the earth now, they're really going to have trouble with these right here. So I'm going to still give them a chance to receive me that they might be saved, that they might be delivered. But even if you got to go through that, you better get your life right with Christ Jesus. You with me? Because he's already given you an anointing to handle what we've got to go through right now. All we got to do is be like our example, the son of God, who is Jesus the Christ. Have I got any of the children of God in the place? If you are a son of God, a child of God, then Christ has already given you an example. He's already demonstrated. He got 12 others to demonstrate it. He got 70 others to demonstrate it. And he promises that if you do the same thing that he did, you should have the same victories that he has had. Are you with me? And God is doing everything he can to keep you from receiving all this that would be released upon you with your hard head self. Are you all following me? Because Revelation 18 says, and these three was the third part of men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouth. Their power is in their mouth and in their tails for their tails were like unto serpents and had heads and with them they do hurt. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk, neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. He's saying the rest of mankind in this world is going to be a worldwide problem, something that will require God's attention. So you need to be careful on what it is that you worship. What you're giving your attention to and it's not of God, then you ought to fix it so that it'll become a part of you and it'll be even more difficult for you to let go. So when he releases these things, he says two of the six sins that will be prominent are demon worship and idolatry. Let me help you. The satanic Bible will be widely read and the church of Satan will fix its pews. Goddess worship and witchcraft will be the rage of the politically correct statues and images of the Antichrist will become common and multitudes will bow down to them. Depraved men and women will kill God's children without fear of punishment, abortion, euthanasia, gang warfare and terrorism will go unabated. Drug abuse, astrology, fortune telling, signs, omens and theft will become worldwide. In other words, second Timothy three thirteen evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse. You think, it, you think it's bad now? <laughs> 
You think it's bad now. But Christ has just given us warnings that we should be prepared for, or said another way, you shouldn't even be engaged in this. You shouldn't even, uh, you shouldn't even encounter these released from the abyss. Amen. So I'm believing that all of us going to be where God needs us to be. And do I have a witness in the room? Okay. Okay. All wanted to study of revelations. <laughs> this is it. Amen. It gets even deeper. I'm trying to get to Revelation chapter 21 so we can get past all this. Amen. So we can rejoice, rejoice, and be exceeding glad for the reward that we're going to get when we meet him in the air. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Now, if you've been paying attention, you also see some similarities in what's going on in and around us now. So God is saying, can it get worse than this? Yes. This is a piece of cake compared to what's to come. Amen? Amen. I'm not going for long it anyway. The alarm already went off. Amen. But I think that's all the Lord wanted me to share with you on tonight. Amen. All right. Got some even deeper in chapter 10 and 11. It's going to get a little deeper. Get your seat belts. Amen. Because if you really see what's to come, that's why they used to preach fire and brimstone back in the day because they've studied Revelation and they are aware of what's to come. And that's the whole intent of the book of Revelation is to scare you to death. Or should I say to scare you to life? You with me? So you want to prepare yourself, study. You want to go ahead and read some of the stuff ahead. You can do that. But let's pray. Father God in heaven, Lord, we bless your holy name. We thank you, O oh God. We give you glory and honor. We thank you, O oh God, that this does not concern us. We thank you, O oh God, that we'll be raptured, that we'll be caught up to meet you, O oh God. And then this stuff might happen and be released. But God, in the name of Jesus, we want it to be, to be known. We want to declare that you are our God. You are our Father. We have received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We thank you for what he has done for us on the cross. We thank you that he has given us power over all the enemy. We thank you, dear God, that he has already walked as an example of how we are to operate in Christ Jesus. Like the Bible says, let this mind be in you, in us, that is also in Christ Jesus. Help us, O oh God, that we might walk worthily, O oh God. Help us, O oh God, with those things which we encounter, the things that we come up against each day, the things that the enemy tries to attack us with, the things, dear Heavenly Father, that he tries to display that we cannot overcome. But I'm believing the devil is a lie, O oh God, and that you are the truth. And if we know the truth, we are then to be made free. So I'm looking for healing and deliverance and breakthrough and blessings. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Now, God, to you be the glory and to us be the blessing. To you be the glory and to these your people the blessing, oh God. So help them to stand tall in it. Help them be worthy. Help them to walk in it and receive the anointing and the blessing that you provide, oh God. God, we thank you, we praise you, we magnify you, we give you all glory. In your name, we thank you and pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you receive it, just say thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I want to thank those of you that are online for tuning in, those of you who are here, praise the Lord. If someone wants to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior online, just type it in the search bar, glory to God, and we'll get back to you. If it's somebody in the room who is unsaved and you want to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, the floor is yours. We'll receive you. We'll help usher you in. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I see everybody in here is saved. If you're saved, wave at me. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Amen. Father God, we thank you. Glory to God. If there's an, if there are any of you who have an offering, you want to give it to us electronically online, you can go through one of our um, um, electronic options. 
and then bless us so that we might continue the work of the Lord. Amen. Those of you in the room, we have others moving around that you might be able to make your deposits, that you might receive the blessings that are attached to them. Amen. Let me just say thank you for every gift and every blessing that you have already given. Amen. Amen. This coming Sunday, of course, is going to be our anniversary, pastor's anniversary, my wife and myself. Amen. I want to see you in the room. Amen. We've asked each ministry to represent. Glory to God. We've asked that the men, the uh, deacons be in deacons uh, attire that we wear on first Sunday, the, uh, the ushers to be in their uniforms as well as the choir and all of us in our civic attire. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. I just want to make a good representation and showing of what the Lord is doing in and around here. Amen. Yes, ma'am. This coming Friday is movie night with the bishop and the pastor. Okay. No, we're going to be here watching a movie. Amen. I might have to send Tanya. Amen. Amen. She was just saying this coming Friday we'll be uh, here in the building, 3320 Mailwood, uh, having watching a movie with the bishop and the pastor. Amen. Amen. What time does it start? 6 to The show starts at 7? Amen. Going to have pop in the building? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Okay. All right. All hearts, minds clear. Father God in heaven, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity that we had to share one with another. These scriptures that you have provided. Now, God, help us in them. Help us walk worthily. You get the glory. Give us the blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.